First, I would like to uh, welcome everyone today. Thank you for attending our Memorial Day program. This is a very special national holiday because on this day we celebrate and remember all those who made the ultimate sacrifice while serving our country. On Memorial Day, usually many of my family and friends will thank me for my service. I graciously thank them. But I do try to explain to them the real purpose of this holiday. Not to remember the living, but to remember and honor those who died in sacrificing their lives for the living. Memorial Day is a American holiday observed on the last Monday of May. It was created to honor the men and women who died while serving in the U.S. military. Originally known as Decoration Day, it or originated in the years following the Civil War, but didn't become an official holiday until 1971. The Civil War ended in the spring of 1865. By the late 1860s, Americans in various towns and cities had begun holding springtime tributes to those countless fallen soldiers and sailors, decorating their graves with flowers and reciting prayers. In keeping with this, this tradition, we'd like to ask Kathy Bartlow to come forward and offer a prayer. Welcome everyone. Please bow your heads and join us in prayer. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for bringing us together at this Memorial Day celebration to acknowledge the debt we owe to the men and women of the United States military who have guarded this country with their lives. We especially honor those who have lost their lives while defending this nation. They fought on land, at sea, and in the air, always with the understanding that they might not come back from the mission and accepting that as part of the job. They were willing to risk death to protect this land, which we hold so dear, and the American people along with it. We thank them for their, serv their service, their sacrifice, and promise that we'll carry on their legacy to ensure that they did not die in vain. Freedom is a gift and treasure. Although we may all agree with that truth, it's often easy to take for granted the greatest gifts that God has given us in our lives. Those most precious gifts are never free, however. They come with a price, with sacrifice. Many brave <clears throat> men and women have been willing to face hard battles in order for us to enjoy the gift of freedom today. John 15, 13 says, Greater love has no one than this, that he lay his life down for his friends. We remember them today. May God help us to live so courageously. May we follow the brave examples of those who have gone before us. Father, we ask for your blessing upon the souls of those good men and women who gave their last breath in defense of our nation, our freedom, and our children's future. We also ask you to bless everyone gathered here today and grant us the strength to rise to the challenges of our time and meet them in full faith that you will always be with us. On this Memorial Day, <clears throat> we pray that you would lead us toward a world where none must give their lives in pursuit of freedom. May we be receptive to your guidance and may we never forget the fallen. Amen and may God bless America. Thank you, Kathy, that was beautiful. Memorial Day is not about which war our service members fought in or which war was the greatest. It's about the individuals who gave all 
no questions asked for country, loved ones, and freedom. Sometimes forgotten are the spouses, families, mothers, fathers, daughters, sisters, brothers, and sons who experienced the ultimate sacrifice in their own way. We would like to recognize those who may have lost a loved one while they were serving in the armed forces. If you have lost a family member who died while serving, please raise your hand. I have a couple, thank you. Thank you for each of us present today. We offer our sincere thanks and gratitude. Now I'd like to ask all our military veterans to stand. If you're able to, all the military veterans. <laughs> Thank you for your service and for being here. Thank you for being here to honor your fellow comrades who made the ultimate sacrifice. And now, Les Jones will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. Les Jones. Now, now you know my name, and I've got a script. It's a short script, but I'm going to, typical of me, I'm going to go off script for a minute. And I want to thank Dick Nations for putting this entire group together, not just today's group, but the group of 34 veterans and non-veterans. There's 23 veterans that are on our list and growing, and there's 11 non-veterans, and I'm honored to be a non-veteran who was asked to be part of the program. So with that, uh, please rise, remove your headdress, and face our flag. Persons in uniform should remain silent, face the flag, and render the military salute. And then following the pledge, Please remain standing for the national anthem <clears throat> and the veterans during the playing of our national anthem. You have the option to salute our flag as the, as the anthem is played or to place your hand over your heart. And on the anthem, please sing along with its, please sing along. I'm going to stand back from the mic. <laughs> Thank you. Please be seated. We're the Bradshaw family, and we don't go around and do this professionally by any means, but as a family, we've sung together for many years, and this is actually only about half of us, but we're thrilled to be here with you today, and we appreciate all the service. Um, yeah. Anyway, we'll just be a couple of minutes, and then you can carry on. Thank you. Got it, Candace. Oh, wait a minute. I need to do this. 
beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. Beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. My home, sweet home. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to continue with our program, so continue eating. We would like to thank the uh, IHOP for this wonderful breakfast. Yeah. Thank all the cooks, the wait staff, uh, and especially uh, Josh Summers, the IHOP district manager, and the grandson of one of our own, Art Allen. Yeah. Okay, allow me to uh, introduce our speaker today. Command Sergeant Major Dick Nations, U.S. Army, retired. Sergeant Major Nations proudly served a, a total of 26 years in both the active duty and reserves. His military training and assignments include heavy weapons infantrymen, Army Special Service Exhibi Expedition skydiving team, Armor Crewman, Armor Platoon Sergeant, Armor First Sergeant, Cavalry First Sergeant, Armor Battalion Command Sergeant Major. He is a graduate of the uh, U.S. Army Basic NCO Academy, Advanced NCO Academy, Senior NCO Academy, and the First Sergeant Academy and earned a Bachelor's of Science degree from Texas A&M University in Commerce. <laughs> During his military career, Sergeant Major Nations earned the Legion of Merit Medal, the Meritorious Service Medal, twice awarded, and the Army Commendation Medal, also twice awarded, and the Texas Legislative Distinguished Service Medal, among numerous and other awards and citations. Dick and his wife, Hank, right over here is Hank, <laughs> have resided in the Las Palmas Grand for five years. Dick is an active participant in the LB, LPG's Red Friday Patriots group who meet here at this restaurant every Friday morning, or yeah, every Friday morning for breakfast. Additionally, Dick and other Red members in our community are quite active in their attempt to document the military history of veterans living in Las Palmas Graham. I introduce Co Command Sergeant Major Dick Nations. Well, thank you, Ron. It's amazing. I. I would be interested to learn exactly where you got all of those credentials today. Where did that come from? Who gave you that? Oh, good. How many patriots, American patriots, do we have here? May I see your hands? Well, if you consider yourself a patriot, how about turning to the person to your left and to your right 
and say thank you for your patriotism. You know, I look out and I see both veterans and patriots all here to honor our fallen service members and I could not be more proud. But for those whom we are here to honor today, be assured that they too would be proud that you're here to recognize their sacrifice. Today you see me in dress uniform, which by the way I proudly wear in honor of our fallen service members. And while putting on the uniform this morning, I reminisced about an experience that I had some years ago. I recalled an incident that took place while serving as a company first sergeant. My wife and I were invited to attend a nearby wedding. And since it was a formal affair at a country club, I went in my army dress blue uniform at the request of the bride. My wife looked absolutely stunning that evening in her formal gown. So when we arrived at the club, I drove up to the entrance and the doorman promptly came to the passenger door and assisted my wife out of the car. Then he promptly came over to my side of the car. but. Before I could get out, he pointed to the other end of the building and said, the band entrance is over there. <laughs> well, it's all about interpretation, isn't it? Then I recalled an event when my brigade was in mass formation for a class A inspection by our division commander, a major general, and as the senior enlisted advisor for my battalion, per protocol, I walked three steps behind and one step to the right of the general as he went down and inspected our troops. So as he proceeded down the ranks, he would stop and ask some of the soldiers which outfit they were in. And standing tall, each soldier responded, Headquarters Company, 1st Tank, sir, or Bravo Company, 112th Armor, General. Well, then he walked up to this young private first class. And when the general asked, which outfit are you in, private, he snapped and said, sir, dress blues with metal, sir. <laughs> It's all about interpretation, isn't it? So I ask, what is your interpretation of this holiday we call Memorial Day? Well, for countless families across the nation, Memorial Day is a stark and very painful reminder of those who were never afforded the opportunity to be honored as veterans for service to their country. Their sacrifice is a true expression of selfless service, one that no one would pick for themselves. Whether they volunteered during a time of war, served during peacetime, are never expected to the nation's uniform until their draft arrived. They represent the best America has to offer. Heroes all. And that is the topic of my address to you today. Heroes all. Memorial Day is a day that commemorates all men and women who have died while serving in the military for the United States, not just those who died in combat. And for this Memorial Day, 
I decided to take a close look at the number of American service members who lost their lives in an effort to put their sacrifices into a broader perspective. I found the numbers to be startling. Since 1776, America has been involved in 93 wars or significant conflicts. War, in the context of the list of 93, is construed to be an armed conflict between organized U.S. military forces and organized forces of belligerence. In my research, I discovered an interesting statistic. Since 1776, the U.S. has experienced less, less than 20 years that were without an armed conflict having occurred during the course of any year. 225 of 245 years, would you have guessed? American war deaths have varied dramatically depending on the war they were volunteered for or being drafted to fight. Some of our service members fell to the enemy, many more fell to disease. Since the Revolutionary War, 650,000 American troops have died in battle and more than 539,000 died from other non-combat related causes. In the deadliest conflict, nearly 655,000 military personnel died. That was the toll during the U.S. Civil War. Two percent of the country's population at that time. That's almost half of all American service members who have ever died during wartime. A review of America's more significant periods of conflict reveals that America lost 25,000 in the Revolutionary War, 13,000 in the Mexican-American War, 655,000 in the Civil War, 116,000 in World War I, 405,000 in World War II, 36,000 in the Korean War, 58,000 in the Vietnam War, 7,000 and still counting in the Gulf War and the War on Terrorism. Add another 6,000 in other conflicts to include the War of 1812, the Indian Wars, and the Spanish-American War, just to name a few. That's more than 1.3 million of our American soldiers, Marines, sailors, airmen, and Coast Guardsmen who lost their lives during periods of war or conflict. Add to that staggering number of losses another 1.5 million wounded and 82,000 still missing or unaccounted for that may have been killed, wounded, captured, or executed. Startling? Yes. Upsetting? Yes. Terrifying? Yes. And frightening to think we are still at war and we are still losing our young men and women serving our armed forces. Today, we are fighting the longest war in our country's history. Beginning January of 1991, the Gulf War, our service members have fought throughout the Middle East 20 years. Heroes all. Heroes all. You know, not long ago, most Americans were likely to know an active military service member. But today, because of factors like the political cost of launching a military draft and the increasing automation and outsourcing 
of military-related tasks. Fewer Americans have personal connection to someone in the armed forces. During World War II, about 12% of the total U.S. population were a part of the armed forces. So while fewer service members actually enlisted during the Vietnam War, the Vietnam conflict draft was felt across American society. Today, out of a nation of 329 million people, 1.3 million Americans are in active duty military and another 1.1 million serve in the reserves and National Guard. That small figure influences the way the general public thinks or doesn't think about the human cost of conflict. Today, less than 1% of our total population has served in the armed forces. Less than 1%. So we have a disconnect in our society about what's going on in the military, who has served in the military, and what they experienced while serving in the military. In many ways, Americans today feel removed from military conflict and the global war on terror. The war is over there. The war is over there. And the growing distance between Americans and the military has even changed the way we think and talk about the armed forces. Today, according to the Pentagon, seven in 10 youths would fail to qualify for military service in fact, 71% of the 34 million 17 to 24 year olds in the United States would not qualify because of reasons related to health, physical appearance, educational background, and criminal background. Only 1% of young people are both eligible and inclined to even hold a conversation with the military about possible service. That's according to the Defense Department. No wonder there is a disconnect. You know, after the Civil War, we were far from disengaged from the military. The war between the states and its terrible cost gave rise to new traditions and social norms in how citizens honored fallen soldiers. The casualty figures were so great, nearly every citizen was directly touched by the conflict. Families and friends of soldiers who lost their lives chose to honor the sacrifice of the fallen by spending a day decorating their graves. And decorating the graves of fallen soldiers was a long-standing tradition, but the establishment of military cemeteries around the nation transformed that practice into more of a community event. In May of 1868, the first official Decoration Day was declared, and it was observed at Arlington National Cemetery. Volunteers decorated the graves of more than 20,000 Union and Confederate soldiers. And during World War II, Decoration Day was expanded and renamed Memorial Day to honor all Americans who died in military service. Now, for the second year in a row, Memorial Day looks a little different than in years past. In many cases, our backyard barbecues and get-togethers are replaced by video chats and other marvels of modern technology. 
Still, we hold to some semblance of what life was and what we know it will return to. And the memories and emotions this day brings are always the same. So today, across America, to honor our fallen, we express our gratitude with gravesite visits, limited public addresses, limited community memorial services, and limited small gatherings of patriots and flag displays and poppies and prayers. My hope is that on this very special day, parents and guardians are taking a moment to educate their children about the importance of Memorial Day before they depart to the park or to the lake just to celebrate another holiday. Allow me to take you back in time, recent history, World War II era. I'd like to share with you a brief story of both tragedy and heroics. To do run parallel. Some of you may be familiar with the story of the Lost Battalion, which served in the European theater during World War II. This is not to be confused with the Lost Battalion of World War I. The Lost Battalion of World War II refers to the 1st Battalion, 141st Infantry Regiment, 36th Infantry Division. The 36th Infantry Division was originally the Texas National Guard. They were surrounded by German forces on 24 October 1944 in the French mountains near the German border. Against the advice of his senior officers, the division's commanding general committed the Texas Battalion to an engagement. The battalion was cut off by the Germans and attempts by the 141st Infantry Regiment's other two battalions to extricate it failed. The 405th Fighter Squadron of the Army Air Corps airdropped supplies to the 275 trapped soldiers. Conditions on the ground quickly deteriorated as the Germans continued to repel U.S. forces. The final rescue attempt was made by the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, a segregated unit composed of second generation Japanese Americans. Let me repeat that. The 442nd Regimental Combat Team was a segregated unit composed of second generation Japanese Americans in five days of nonstop battle from 26 to 30 October 1944, the 442nd Combat Team broke through the German defense and rescued 211 men. But the 442nd suffered over 800 casualties in doing so. India Company went in with 185 men, eight came out unhurt. Kilo Company engaged the enemy with 186 men, 169 were wounded or killed. Additionally, the commander sent a patrol of 50 men to find a way to attack a German roadblock and try to liberate the remainder of the trapped men, and only five returned to the perimeter. 42 were taken prisoners. And they were sent to Stalag 7 Alpha in Mooseburg, Bavaria, where they remained until the POW camp was liberated in April of 1945. The 442nd Regimental Combat Team is the most decorated unit in U.S. military history for its size and length of combat service, with its component, the 100th Infantry Battalion, earning the nickname the Purple Heart Battalion due to the number of soldiers injured in combat. In a two-year span, members of the 442nd earned more than 4,000 Purple Hearts and 4,000 Bronze Star Medals. Heroes all. Heroes all. 
In the European African Middle Eastern Theater, 21 Medals of Honor were earned by men from the 442nd Regimental Combat Team, the most of any regiment in the theater. Go for broke was the motto of the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. In 1962, Texas Governor John Connolly made the veterans of the 442nd honorary Texans for their role in the rescue of the lost battalion. Three members of the 442nd, Barney Hajiro, James Okubo, and George Sakuto were awarded the Medal of Honor for their participation in the rescue. Although, due to the discrimination of that era, they were originally awarded lesser medals. But a review in the 1990s resulted in them being upgraded to the Medal of Honor, which the men received in year 2000, one of the recipients posthumously. Ladies and gentlemen, what I have just described is truly the epitome of heroics, bravery, sacrifice. This being only one of countless engagements during the course of American history where the toll in human life, our service members' lives were not given in vain. Yes, national heroes emerge from American conflict. Highly decorated heroes. We can all name a few of our American heroes from George Washington to Sergeant Alvin Yark to Audie Murphy to George Patton to Douglas MacArthur to Desmond Doss or Chris Kyle. But I ask you, what about those other 1.3 million American service members who made the ultimate sacrifice, those that are now resting in grave sites both here and abroad, those 82,000 that are still missing and unaccounted for, what horrible death did they meet? Where are they interred? Aren't they the ones we honor today? What more could we have possibly asked from them? What more could they have possibly done for us? Heroes all. In closing, I might add that as of last year, an estimated 624,000 American veterans were dying every year. 624,000, most of them from natural causes. And a recent study from the National Institutes of Health estimates that half of the men who die every day in the U.S. are veterans. So, as we remember Americans' fallen troops on this Memorial Day, we might also stop by and visit those who served or fought in past wars and listen to the memories of their fallen comrades in arms because they may not be here come Veterans Day. I implore all Americans to honor the memory of our military heroes no longer with us and let us strive every day to live up to the example set by such selfless patriots. So now I ask you again, what is your interpretation of this holiday we call Memorial Day? I believe you now know what my interpretation is. Will you join me in repeating those two words? Heroes all. Thank you. God bless America. God bless our troops. I'll now turn the program back over to Ron. Thank you, Dick. It was very inspiring. Um, go off the script a little bit. I want to read something that I saw on the internet on Facebook the other day. It said, Armed Forces Day is for those still in uniform. Veterans Day 
for those who hung up their uniform, Memorial Day for those who never made it out of their uniforms. Um, Red Friday was mentioned earlier. Red, R-E-D, is an acronym for Remember Everyone Deployed. Say that again, Remember Everyone Deployed, Red. Red Friday was created to demonstrate that we are thinking of those deployed and that, have our, and that they have our full support. You may see many women and children across the country wearing red on Friday. The red shirts, scarves, jackets, and caps serve as a reminder of how important it is that we keep our deployed troops in our thoughts and prayers. Before we depart today, we wish to present you with a red poppy as our gift to each of you, a Memorial Day tradition. But just a few thoughts about poppies. From 1914 to 1918, World War I took a greater human toll than any previous conflict with some 8.5 million casualties. The Great War, as it was then known, also ravaged the landscape of Western Europe where most of the fierce, fiercest fighting took place. From the devastated landscape of the battlefields, the red poppy would grow. And thanks to a famous poem, became a powerful symbol of remembrance. Struck by the sight of the red, bright red blooms on broken ground, Lieutenant John McRae, a Canadian, saw the cluster of red poppies which he thought represented the blood that had been sacrificed for their life, for, for who had sacrificed their lives in these fields, and he wrote a poem entitled, In Flanders Field, which I would like to uh, read in closing. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow, uh, get emotional on this, between the crosses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky, that lark still bravely singing fly, scarce heard amid the guns below. We are the dead. Short days ago we lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Field, in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high. If you break faith with us who die, we shall not sleep, though poppies grow in founders field. Now we would like to have everybody stand for the playing of taps. Thank you for being here to cel celebrate Memorial Day. We'll don't, please do not leave without your poppies. For those who are passing them out, we could do so now. Thank you all for your attendance, and uh, God bless you all.